Hey, how's it going? I'm Harrison Burns, The Grieving Teens, and today we have another person interviewing for his story and his testimony. Would you please give me your name, age, the school you attended, and the year you graduated? My name is Ricky, and uh, I, my, I am 29 years old, sorry, and uh, I graduated in the class of 2010 in Palm Desert High School. Okay, Ricky. Well, thank you for joining me today. Um, my first question to you is just, originally, how did you find out about Grieving Teens, the group? Were you introduced to it by a friend, a coworker, a colleague? Uh, a teacher, counselor, principal? Uh, the, the, my initial reaction or uh, interaction rather with uh, the grieving teens group was one of my friends that passed away. Um, and it was, it was quite a, a big group of us that were impacted by it. So it was recommended to, uh, through counseling or counselors that, uh, that we attend the groups as well. And it really all started when my brother went. I have a twin brother that attended as well. And he went to the group and kind of opened up a little bit. We thought we were little tough guys, so we didn't want to really say anything. But he kind of took that vulnerable spot, met Tom Morris. And um, after he did it, he recognized how much it helped him and recommended it for me. And that's how we got started. Okay, awesome. It sounds like you have a very supportive brother. Uh, yeah. <laughs> which kind of leads into the next question is just why did you start attending the group? What were you going through, your story, your grief, your pain, the things you were dealing with? So the, the first reason why I started attending was we did have a friend. Uh, his name was Jose. He, uh, he, did, he passed away suddenly our freshman year of high school. And it, it kind of impacted us pretty heavy because we were friends. He had moved to town. We were in middle school and we became friends. And uh, somewhere along the line, something bad happened. And it, we kind of had, had bad blood for each other, really. Didn't get along, but uh, even through all that, we still kind of tried to keep it civil and tried to keep it um, that friendship going. And when he en when he ended up passing away suddenly, it was kind of he was kind of left on bad terms. So it really hit myself hard, knowing that the last time I saw my friend, I I, I was mean to him or I, I disrespected him or something like that. So that 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 was what kind of tore us all up. And it was it was a, like I said, a giant group of us that we're kind of going through this up and down relationship. And it, once he passed away, it was just like, like shell shock. So it was almost like the lack of closure was the worst thing about it. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely the lack of closure. It was, it was just the fact that, that I couldn't say, you know, Hey, you're my friend above anything or, or I'm sorry if I offended you or if I ever hurt you, I, I, I never got the chance to do that. Yeah. Sometimes it's better to realize that, the friend is more important than the friendship. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of people miss that point nowadays. Definitely. Uh, but beyond that, how did all that make you feel? Like, did it affect your personal and professional life, whether you had a job or you were just going to school? Did it affect your grades, your attendance, your social behavior? How did you feel through it? Um, I would say that it, it affected me pretty heavy um, in the whole school side. I, I really didn't want to be around any kind of, any kind of classroom, any kind of teacher or anything like that. I was, I kind of already acted out as it was as a, as a teenager, uh, like most of us do when we're teenagers. <laughs> but yeah. th once this happened, it was like, you, you kind of, it became like a little shell that I tried to just keep it in and uh, walked around with a chip on my shoulder, Rick, really. Um, it, it really affected me to where I didn't know what was gonna happen next. You know, it, like I said, it was really sudden. No one knew um, that he, he was even a hint of sick or anything. Um, it was like one day to the next. We saw him walking home, and we came to school the next day and found out that he passed away. So it was a lot of uncertainty, a lot of uh, scared to say the wrong things, so to speak. So uh, it, it was kind of sheltered. Everything was real sheltered and kind of just kept to my own. So. so you kind of closed yourself off to deal with the pain? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, beyond that, were you dealing with anything else? Was anything else in your life affecting you, or did you have any other troubles that were adding to your grief and your pain? Yeah, I, I had my uh, my great grandmother. She was well. I said she's my great grandmother, but she's my mother. Really, she raised me um, from the time I was real little, and she had gotten really sick. She had fallen really sick, so having to deal with that, and then my friend passing, and then having my great grandmother sick at home was kind of a double whammy. Like you know, it, it makes you realize how how something can change so fast. And um, you know, anyone who has a mother out there or a mother figure knows, you know that. The, the boys love their mother, you know, and uh, the last thing you want is, is something to, to happen to your mother figure or your, your mother. And 
I think me leaving on bad terms or with my friend was leaving me so afraid to not be perfect or not be, not make her proud right away. So instead of, instead of actually showing that, I kind of hid it from her that I, I wasn't that way. So going to the groups really helped me to kind of open up that world to where I could actually admit some of my pain and admit some of my faults. Did being in the group have an impact beyond high school? Did it give you the confidence to, and the tools to kind of learn how to cope and deal with things as they come in stride? Did, would you say that's accurate to say? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. I know attending the groups at first, it was kind of, you know, like I said, I didn't want to open up. I, I didn't know who Tom was. I didn't know half the people were in there besides my little group of friends um, because it kind of branched out and became – uh, you know, there was a group over here that was going through what my friend passed away and a group over here that something else was going on. And like I said, I had a chip on my shoulder. I didn't want to open up to uh, these random people that I didn't know. But what ended up happening is we kind of developed, a, 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 I guess, a secretive um, bond with everybody there. Once one person started opening up, it opened the door for someone else to open up. And uh, really, it was all about just leading with that vulnerability and it became, we became each other's pillars, so to speak. You know, we'd walk down the hall and maybe two people that would never speak on normal terms um, were going through something and we knew it because of the group. Uh, all it took was a little smile, maybe a nod, like, yeah, you know, I know, you know, and it's okay. Um, but I definitely say it's helped me out in my personal life. Um, even now into my professional life, I, I'm a team lead at my job and I lead a team of about 40 people. And you definitely have to lead with vulnerability when you're leading that many people and, uh, and trying to actually help them because it, it, whenever you spend so much time with people, it becomes more of a, a family than, it, than just a workplace or, or anything like that. So it definitely helped me to understand that I don't know what this person is going through. You know, I, I don't know what's affecting them in their life because they could have been just like me. You know, I work with a lot of kids right out of high school too. And it helped me to really think about it. Do I know what this person's going through? You know, do I know that they're not going home to a broken family or that it could be something their pet passed away or something? So it definitely helps out in those personal times when to be able to read somebody and tell that something's wrong and to have that supportive uh, nature about it as well. I, I definitely think that that all derived from that grief group. Well, it's incredible to actually hear that i mean and it seems like you're doing very well for yourself um, I'm trying. I'm trying. Yeah. yeah aren't we all um, yeah. <laughs> so would you recommend like, grief groups to other people dealing with stuff like this or a similar group in general to those who are going through pain or something really hard on themselves would you recommend that they would attend groups like this definitely i, I definitely recommend it and um i know i know there's kids out there because i was one of them that definitely think that no i don't want to go to those little share circles and it, it, it really you don't see that kind of aspect um, inside of a classroom a, a general traditional classroom or um, hanging out with your friends everyone wants to be okay pretty much and that that grief group or, or a similar group like you're talking about can, can definitely open up um, a whole new world really to let you see in other people's perspective and also let you know that there's people out there who genuinely care about you you know, you may not know them and they may not know your story as well, but there are people who care. There are people who, who want to help you. And uh, like, like I said about Tom, he was one of those men that, you know, I didn't know him, but he went out of his way to care and he still does to this day. <laughs> I'm almost 30 years old. So uh, yeah. I yeah, definitely recommend definitely it. yeah, definitely. I definitely recommend it. There's, there's people who care about you. So. Well, Gosh, what a story, man. But I, I appreciate your input and your honesty. Thank you for sharing. Um, I just have one final question for you. And it's just, do we have your permission to use this testimony to support grooming teens in a professional capacity? Of course. Okay. Yes. That's all I want to know. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing. And thank you for telling us your testimony. I appreciate it. Thank you for joining us. Thank you as well.